In the early 90s, rap was huge. Then came four boys from Philly who wanted to sing. They called themselves Boys to Men. Originally, the group who came together in 1985 under the name Unique Attraction began with baritone Nathan Morris and tenor Mark Nelson, who attended the Philadelphia High School for the Creative and Performing Arts, along with fellow schoolmates George Baldy, John Schultz, and Marguerite Walker. Being the troublemaker that he was, during a history class, Nate started singing, and the teacher told him to be quiet. He disregarded the order and instead raised his voice as he sang. His classmate Mark then joined in. They were both kicked out and hit it off from there. A couple of years later, tenor Wanye Morris, no relation to Nathan, who sang in the school's choir along with Mark and Nathan, joined the group. George, John, and Marguerite all soon left the group when they graduated. The remaining members then recruited another tenor, Sean Stockman, after hearing him perform a solo in the school's choir. While rehearsing harmonies in a school bathroom on one occasion, Michael McCary joined in. Even though the other members thought their group was already complete, it was clear that adding Michael would be the perfect last piece to the puzzle as their new bass singer. Around this time, the group decided a name change was in order. After hearing the song Boys to Men by New Edition on the radio, they adopted the title as the name they would become famous under. After performing at a Valentine's Day party at school, they managed to sneak into a concert put on by a local radio station in Philly. Their plan was to get backstage to find Will Smith and perform for him. However, while looking for him, they happened to cross paths with New Edition member Michael Bivens. After they sang for him, surprise, surprise, a New Edition song and their number one R&B hit, Can You Stand the Rain? Michael and everyone else within earshot was undeniably impressed. He then gave the group his number and told them to give him a call. Nate would be the one to make that call every day for weeks. After wearing him down, Michael agreed to manage and help produce the group. In a full circle moment, the group would connect with Will Smith years later when they made a very memorable cameo on his show, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Just before their deal was signed and the work could begin though, some major changes occurred. Mark ended up leaving. The reason why varies depending on the source. Some say he left after getting impatient with how long things were taking. There were also rumors about him getting kicked out by the other members. Mark himself though says the real reason was that he was already under another contract and couldn't get out of it since he was a legal adult at 18. The other guys had also signed other contracts, but since they were underage, it was much easier for them to move on. Boys to Men's debut album, Cooley High Harmony, dropped in 1991 on Motown Records. The album and accompanying music videos showed off their collegiate style of dress, as well as some nicknames for each of the members. Wanye was Squirt, Sean was Slim, Michael was Bass, and Nate assumed the name of Alex Vanderpool after a soap opera character who displayed a similar preppy look to the one the group adopted. Boys to Men's first single, the Dallas Austin produced Motown Philly, was a success, peaking at number three on the Billboard Hot 100. The album's second single was an a cappella cover of a classic Motown tune, G.C. Cameron's It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday, from the 1975 coming of age dramedy film, Cooley High. It did even better than Motown Philly, going to number three on the pop charts and giving them their first number one R&B placement. Years later, Dallas would sit down with Vlad TV in 2019 and tell the story of how he ultimately ended up producing nearly the entire album. Initially, he went out to Philly to do just two songs he'd co-written, but when he got wind that the guys were thinking of getting multiple people to do what Dallas knew he could do on his own, he asked them to give him a shot, and they did. As Dallas tells it, since he was so young at the time, just a teen, he'd signed a work-for-hire contract which resulted in him receiving only $1,500 for his efforts. Eventually though, he was able to recoup everything that was rightfully owed to him. Cooley High Harmony went nine times platinum and won them a Grammy Award for Best R&B Performance by a duo or group with vocals. The following year, the group joined MC Hammer's high-profile Too Legit To Quit tour as an opening act. Sadly, while on the road, their tour manager, Khalil Roundtree, was shot and killed while resisting a robbery attempt at the group's hotel in Chicago. The killer was later convicted of the crime and given a 14-year sentence. The group's future performances of It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday were dedicated to him. The group then briefly returned to the studio to record a song co-written and produced by Kenneth Babyface Edmonds for the soundtrack to the romantic comedy film Boomerang that would send their popularity to even higher heights. That song was End of the Road. It reached the number one position on the Billboard Hot 100 and remained there for a record-setting 13 weeks, besting a 35-year-old record set by Elvis Presley. Shortly after, Boys to Men and Michael Bivens parted ways professionally. 
the split was reportedly amicable, and due to him wanting to focus on his own label and managing other new acts. In 1994, the group's second album, simply titled Two, was released. It sold more than 12 million copies in the United States alone, becoming one of the best-selling albums ever released by an R&B group act, and one of the biggest albums of the decade. Several of the tracks became major singles, among them Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis's On Bended Knee, and Babyface's I'll Make Love To You and Water Runs Dry. The group also collected another couple of Grammy wins, including Best R&B Album. The lead single, I'll Make Love To You, amazingly broke End of the Road's 13-week record at number one by spending 14 weeks at the top of the chart, a feat equaled earlier that year by Whitney Houston's cover of I Will Always Love You. On Bended Knee, the second single then replaced I'll Make Love To You at number one, making Boys to Men only the third act ever to replace itself at number one on the Hot 100 chart after Elvis Presley and the Beatles. In the same Vlad TV interview, Dallas Austin was asked why he didn't produce the group's second album after having so much success with the first. Dallas summed up the reason quite simply, saying it was because he didn't like them anymore. He did go into the studio at the very beginning of the process, but says the members' inflated egos completely threw off the vibe. So when they asked him to produce the entire album, he flat out refused and only agreed to do one or two songs. Dallas even had a front row seat to Boys to Men totally dissing Babyface and the song he wrote that would become the biggest of their career, I'll Make Love to You. Motown head Gerald Busby wasn't having it though and told the guys in no uncertain terms that they were going to do the song whether they liked it or not. Then something even more amazing than the guys could imagine happened. They broke their own record again with the help of pop diva Mariah Carey on their duet, One Sweet Day. Released in November 1995, the song spent 16 weeks atop the Hot 100 in the US, becoming the longest running number one song in the chart's history at the time. Motown then issued the Remix Collection, a compilation of remixes of various Boys to Men songs from their first two albums. The group had opposed the release of the collection because they felt the compilation didn't represent their best work. So in retaliation, they signed a distribution deal with Sony. Not surprisingly, this move would negatively affect their next project. Boys to Men's third studio album, Evolution, was released in 1997 to mixed reviews and only sold 2 million copies, far below the immense success of their previous work. The project would also serve as the group's final platinum album. Only one of the project's singles, another Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis pen track called Four Seasons of Loneliness, reached the top spot on the Hot 100. The second single, The Babyface Helm, The Song for Mama, managed to secure a top 10 pop placement. A global tour began in 1997 to promote Evolution was successful in terms of ticket sales, but behind the scenes, Boys to Men was racked by conflicts with their record label as well as internal issues among the members of the group. Making matters worse, health problems began to take their toll. Wanye developed a benign polyp on his vocal cords and the group was forced to postpone part of the tour until he recovered. Michael was privately dealing with a major health issue that made him unable to participate in most of the group's dance routines. What the real problem was wouldn't be revealed until many years later. Sales may have been way down for Evolution, but Boys to Men still got love from the Grammys for their efforts, with two nominations for Best R&B Album and Best R&B Vocal Performance by a duo or group for A Song for Mama. In 1999, Motown's parent company Polygram was bought by Universal Music Group. Amidst the major corporate restructure, Motown was merged with UMG's Universal Records, where Boys to Men found themselves reassigned. They would go on to produce only one studio album at their new home, 2000's Nathan Michael Sean Wanye. It sold just 500,000 copies in the US. Boys to Men departed from Universal the next year. After signing a new deal with Arista Records in 2002, Boys to Men released Full Circle, but like the album before it, it didn't sell well. Full Circle would also serve as the final album for Boys to Men as a quartet. Michael McCary left the group due to chronic back problems resulting from multiple sclerosis, as well as other personal problems he had going on. Arista terminated Boys to Men's contract a few months later, and the remaining members took a temporary hiatus from the music industry. After about a year out of the spotlight, Boys to Men created the independent label MSM Music Group, where they released their next several projects, including a slew of cover albums. In 2011, the group released 20, named in recognition of the group's 20 years in the music business. Originally, Boys to Men had announced that they would be reuniting with original member Michael McCary for the project, but soon after that announcement, he declined and did not join in. Apparently, he balked at signing a contract that would protect the other three members should he decide to bolt again, and Michael just wasn't down to sign it. Boys to Men's last album to date, another collection of covers titled Under the Streetlight, dropped in the fall of 2017. While they remained stronger as a unit, 
Individually, the members of Boys to Men have all taken the opportunity to venture off into other things and focus on their personal lives. Wanye competed on season 22 of Dancing with the Stars in 2016. He lives with his wife, Amber Reyes, and has six children that he shares with ex-wife, Tracy Nath. Prior to walking down the aisle though, Wanye allegedly had a relationship with R&B singer Brandy when she was underage. After they worked together on a remix to her song, Broken Hearted, she began touring with Boys to Men and subsequently fell hard for Wanye at the approximate age of 17. Or 16. We'll just go with 17 for now, since that sounds better? She stated in her Behind the Music special in 2012 that the relationship didn't last because he fell in love with someone else, leaving her, no pun intended, brokenhearted. That someone else turned out to be another R&B songstress by the name of Adina Howard. Adina verified the whole thing in her 2019 Unsung episode. Unfortunately, the love triangle also ended up doing irreparable damage to her career. Two young ladies allowed their egos to get in the way and were kind of going through it about a guy. And that conflict caught the attention of Adina's and Brandy's label exec, Sylvia Roan. There probably was an exchange of words for Adina not to focus on Wanye because we're focusing on the second record and to focus mainly on that and not him. Wendy Williams caught wind of it, called Adina, and Adina opened up like she normally would, except for she had some choice words in there for Sylvia and for Brandy. Well, that pissed Sylvia off. She was on fire. You can be a boss on your record, but don't be a boss to the boss that makes your records. <laughs> I'm afraid you to make your record. No, you got two queens in one castle. The one who writes the check is gonna win. As a result, the release date for Adina's album was delayed indefinitely. I said something very inappropriate about the head of the label, and she pulled up the emergency brake shut everything down. Nate got into flipping houses. He even took his skills to reality TV in 2018 with his own HGTV show called Hit Properties with Nathan Morris. Sean was actually the first Boys to Men member to make his solo debut, doing so at the height of the group's popularity. In 1996, he released the song Visions of a Sunset, which ended up on the soundtrack for the drama film Mr. Holland's Opus. He went on to release his debut EP album in 2018 titled Sean, followed by his first full-length LP in 2020, Forward. He's also married with three children. In November 2016, for reasons unknown, he decided to out himself as a serial cheater. Sean posted a video on Instagram to his wife of 15 years, apologizing for his indiscretions. Sean quickly deleted the video after many fans jumped on him for taking to social media to air out his dirty laundry and for not being accountable for his actions. So what happened to Michael? He finally decided to tell his truth in a 2016 episode of Ianla Fix My Life. His multiple sclerosis diagnosis did take a tremendous toll on him and his ability to be fully present in the group. Well, I was in Boys to Men when I first saw some of the ailments start to happen. It was like little back spasms at first, and then they would get stronger and stronger. So each time it would get, it would get more harsh. Once I was about 22, it started going to full scale. They were saying that I have a nerve around the sciatica that was locked in place that uh, could sever. If I step wrong, you know what I'm saying? It's a possibility that you can be paralyzed. His symptoms and frequent doctor visits, he said, started to interfere with the band's schedule, which caused a lot of tension and fighting. Yet he still continued to keep his diagnosis a secret. The other members were under the impression that he had scoliosis and a regular curving of the spine. He maintains, though, that his leaving Boys to Men had more to do with the other members turning their backs on him than anything else. If I had to sum up what I got from my brothers in Boys to Men, I would have to say betrayal a broken bond. I mean, at this point, we don't get talk. Michael also had some personal issues that he was struggling with, namely his 14-year marriage ending disastrously, causing him to be separated from his three children. After taking to social media to state that there was no beef between Michael and the rest of the group members, Sean then appeared on BET's The Tammy Mac Late Show in 2020 to further explain what the real deal was. Because the truth is, Mike never really was as ambitious about music as we were. Mm -hmm. So it was one of those things where when his back started to kind of, you know, spaz out, like we seen him less. You know, there were times where he just wouldn't show up at shows. He wouldn't show up at, at TV appearances and it started to wear on our business. So it was only ne necessary for us to make that, you know, cut the, the ties because 
he wasn't willing to do even those things to continue on with with uh with the group's uh, responsibilities which were you know the basic things that he already used to do on february 10th 2023 boys to men launched a new series of digital collectibles called love you forever featured in the collection is new unreleased custom music and artwork pieces from the group and echoes the evolution and different expressions of a journey through love it's an approach the group are taking to create deeper relationships with their fans <laughs>